Hey guys, it's Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today I'm in our brand new studio here in Puerto Rico. I'm actually still building this thing out. But tomorrow, May 3rd, I'm gonna be on Geared Up, which is a live stream on Profoto's website where I'm gonna be talking about how to do several different lighting setups if you're working in a small space like this and you're shooting catalog work or test shoots or e-commerce. Everybody needs to know how to light this sort of thing and I thought it would be really helpful to share the first part of that video here on F-Stopper's channel. But if you wanna check out the entire video and see the other lighting setups that I'm gonna do, tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern to watch it live. Or if you're seeing this after it's already aired, you can watch the entire episode by going to the link in the description. I hope you guys find this useful. Let's jump right into it. All right, geared up. This is a really cool opportunity. You are here in our brand new studio in Puerto Rico. If you followed our channel, you know that we had an incredible studio, but now we've built out two separate ones. This is our shooting studio, which is a two car garage. And so if you're at home thinking like, oh my gosh, all these photographers have these huge studios and there's no way I could ever rent one or buy one. I'm gonna show you what we've done with a two car garage. And so today we're gonna to be shooting some very simple test shots or some catalog images that you might be hired to take, say at a local boutique in your own town. We have Mia Blakeman. She's gonna be modeling for us. You can check out her Instagram below. And the first thing I wanna do is just show you how bad the natural ambient light is in a place like this. We're kind of in a cave. I do have some LED lights installed in the ceiling, but by no means are they ideal. So the first thing that I know from experience is I am going to have to let a lot of light into my camera. And in order to do that, I'm gonna set my aperture at 2.8. Take off my trigger. We're not gonna be using any strobes yet. I'm gonna go up to ISO, let's go up to ISO 400, and I'm gonna slow my shutter down to about one one hundredth of a second. And for all of these shots, I want you to give me the exact same pose so that as we put them on the screen, we can compare all the different lighting that we're going to do. So I'm gonna step back as far as I possibly can. We have a white seamless here, and Mia is probably six feet off the back of it, which is gonna give some separation between our background and our model. Let's go ahead and take one shot here, three, two, one. And as you can see from this image, she's got the raccoon eyes, the white balance is kind of crazy. This looks as awful as you could possibly make it. So the easy solution for this is to add your own light. And the other thing I wanna mention really quickly is that I'm shooting at 2.8 just so that I can get enough light into our scene, but these are definitely not the optimal settings for shooting catalog work. In many cases, you're gonna want the entire outfit and the entire model nice and sharp, but then depending on how you use these images, you might send them off to a graphic designer or the company that you're shooting for, they may actually wanna cut the model out and put them in different environments or different advertisement. So I'm going to now change the camera to the optimal settings for studio work, which is gonna be about F8. I'm gonna drop my ISO to about 200, that's reasonable. And then I'm gonna just increase my shutter speed a little bit to one over 200th of a second. The idea is to kill all the ambient light. I could cut these lights off, but then we wouldn't be able to see anything. But at these settings, if I just take a quick shot here, you can see the frame is 100% black. So I'm gonna add the Profoto Air Remote to the top of my camera. And these allow you to do some really fancy things like TTL. So you do need to buy the one that corresponds to your camera if you're going to use that function. Today, I'm just gonna be using these all in manual. So I'm not gonna use the TTL mode, but I can control all the lights that we're gonna set up here. The first thing I wanna do is probably not Profoto's biggest advertisement. I'm not gonna use a modifier at all. I'm actually going to fire our little B10X here into the ceiling. This is a technique I use all the time as a wedding photographer or as an event photographer. If you have white ceilings and white walls, you can fire your strobe right into them and essentially create a huge light source. The one thing you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind with this is the closer that we set the light to the wall, the smaller the light is going to be. And if I bring this really far back, you could imagine almost like the sun outside it's now gonna light the entire wall and it's gonna make a much larger light source. At this point, I would think that you might know, the larger the light source, the softer the light, it's gonna look almost like an overcast day. And the smaller the light source, the harder and harsher the light's gonna look, it's gonna look like you're at the beach and the sun's directly hitting you. 
So depending on the look that you want, you can manipulate the size of your light. And then the second thing you're going to want to really pay attention if you're bouncing your light is not just the size of the light, but also the position. If we get the light really far away, it's going to be even softer, and it's going to light her and the backdrop evenly. If we get the light really close, it's going to just light our model, and maybe the backdrop's going to go darker. So the first thing that I want to do, I'm just going to tilt our B10X straight up. And I don't want any of the light to spill over and hit our model, because that's going to give us one an unflattering light. But it's also going to give us this mixed light that's going to be really hard to understand what it's doing. And so to help you guys see what this effect is, we're going to turn the modeling light on. And as I lift this up, you can see if I get it really close to the ceiling, it's a tiny, tiny little light source. It's probably actually not going to do a whole lot to our scene. But if I lower it down, and if I lower it all the way, I'm now starting to light up a huge area. So this is really, really useful when bouncing light. I'm going to put it maybe two feet from the ceiling. The ceiling in here is only eight feet, so this is a pretty small studio space. And I'm just going to set this light right here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the modeling lamp off since I'm using battery. And let's go ahead and take a test shot. Again, we're at F8, 200th of a second, ISO 200. And you can see now, with the single strobe, we are able to get a frame. It's not black anymore. But if we zoom in, you can see it's casting all these shadows in her eye sockets, and it's making her kind of have those raccoon eyes, which we definitely don't want. And overall, it's just not a very flattering light position. So what I want to do instead, if you find that you're getting this sort of effect, is just to bring the light further back. And now I'm illuminating an area that's more in front of her, and it's going to start to open up the eyes. It might even, depending on how far back you put it, you might start to get the catch, eye, uh, catch lights in the eyes, which are really nice. Let's just go ahead and do a shot here. Go ahead and strike the same pose, Mia. Three, two, one. And now you can see this looks much better than where we started. Everything's really even. We have some soft light on the background. We don't have a lot of shadows being cast everywhere. But it's also, it's kind of bland. And so one thing that you can easily do is now move the light to manipulate the way the light is cast. Even though this is soft light, if we put it right over the camera, it's going to have all of our shadows being cast down, which sometimes looks nice. But if we move it over here to our side, we can now have soft light, but then give a little bit of directionality. And you got to remember, with directionality also comes texture. So now the clothing is going to show its shape a little bit better. You're going to have some highlights and some shadows. And so typically, the photography I like to do, I like to get the light as far off, or not as far off as you can, but definitely off to the side, maybe 45 degrees, 60 degrees, so that we get some highlights and shadows. Let's go ahead and take a shot here. And I'm going to go ahead and bump up the power just one stop because we've moved the light significantly further and kind of off to the side. We're now having to fire the strobe a little more to get the same exposure. And as you can see here, this is starting to look even better. Now we have a little bit of shadow under the chin. Her nose is casting the slightest shadow. Again, the shadows are really soft because we're using this bounce flash. And uh, you're not going to see them like you would like a hard direct sunlight. But it, again, it's giving a little bit more directionality. But while we're talking about bounce flash, one last thing I just want to show in this very, very simple setup that anybody can use is we don't just have to use the ceiling. I can also bring this light over. And because I have white walls, Lee and I actually just painted this studio yesterday. We had some ugly Caribbean island yellow, is what I call it. And uh, you definitely don't want colored walls because it's going to bounce off and then throw that cast onto your subject. So this really only works with white or potentially like a neutral gray. Um, we can fire the light into the side. And as you're going to predict, this is going to create a large light source that's coming from the hardest angle we've done yet. So this should have the most directionality. Three, two, one. And if we compare the two lights, this one feels a little bit more open. This almost has like a huge window light effect. If you look at her entire body, from head to toe, it just feels like she's being lit a little bit more evenly, where when we were bouncing off the ceiling, the upper part of her body was brighter, and then her legs started to get a little bit darker. So if you need to do full body, 
and you want to make sure the light's falling off evenly, you're going to want to use as large of a light source and maybe even light shoulder or waist high so that the light falling off is even. If you're more concerned about the face or you're just doing three quarter shots, you can get a little bit more directionality from above and uh, fire into the ceiling. All that being said, you probably don't want to light from below. That's just not very natural looking. You don't see that often when you go outside. But from the side or from the top are probably the most natural light sources. The final thing I want to do with bounce flash before we start getting into a different lighting setup is let's do the flattest light possible. And that is we have this white garage door. Let's just fire our strobe straight behind the camera. I'm not even going to angle it. I could point it in a different direction, but let's just fire it right behind me. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this up maybe a half a stop here. And now if I do the same shot, three, two, one. You can see we have very soft light. It's filling in her skin. This looks amazing for the model. But because there's no directionality at all, it's coming straight from the camera. It's almost filling in every single shadow on the outfit. So depending on you know, the purpose of these images, this shot is great for showing all the texture and showing the outfit in the most amount of detail. So in the next little segment, we're going to change everything up and use some hard light, do the complete opposite of what we've just done. And then maybe towards the end, we might play around with using some soft light and then some fill to kind of mix and match some lighting so that you have the most options available. So super practical stuff, just bouncing light into your ceiling. I'm going to get into some harder light with some different modifiers and also then combine some fill light with uh, Octabox. Definitely tune in to the Profoto link in the description below to check out the entire video. Also, if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to our channel below. We're trying to get to a million subscribers this year. That's kind of our goal for 2022. And if you want to learn from some of the best photographers in the world, photographers that are way more talented than me, go to fstoppers.com slash store where we have our full length tutorials featuring all different types of genres from macro to architecture to headshots and swimwear, landscapes, basically everything that you can imagine. You can check out all of those at fstoppers.com slash store. But in the meantime, I'm going to see you guys tomorrow on Pro Photos Geared Up. See ya.